And these are the mountains behind the hovel. These are the Tegetus Mountains. This is the reverse side of the hovel. Perhaps if we go through the olive trees, you get to see the mountains in their full glory. In the winter, in the far distance, the mountains up there will be covered in snow. In fact, the snow lasts until about April. Working forward, we now come to see the hovel from the outside. These are the olive trees at the front. There are 250 around the hovel. This first room you see is the rat room. Uh, we'll show you the inside in a while. Uh, it was much shorter than this. It has been extended and uh, is one of the three downstairs bedrooms. Next to it is the old bread oven, which has been renovated. And to the side of it are stairs, which take you up to the kitchen and the main uh, uh, eating area. Above the rat room is the start of the living area and then a balcony, which runs the length of the property. Here are the windows at the end of the rat room and as you can see, the balcony going up along above the rat room and also above the next room. This room is the main bedroom. Those windows and shutters will be flung open soon and will reveal enormous great windows. This whole wing of the house is new. It was added on, I hope you can't see the join, but it was added on to the old house when it was renovated. Now walking out into the olive groves, you see this wing in full. The sun's rather blinding me at this point. There's the end of the balcony. There's the second floor of the new wing. And there is the ground floor. If we walk around again, we're now walking towards the opposite side of the hovel and looking out through the trees, one can see in gaps in the trees at uh, the other side of the valley. You can see down there olive terraces and somewhere on the other side is a deserted convent. There's no actual houses. This again is the bottom of the new wing and the top of the new wing. And this is the balcony. We'll go on to that later. Underneath it, Ranji and Joshua. That's Joshua adding his two pennies worth. Uh, this is a shaded seating area. And the uh, entrance, which you see, is to the bat room, one of the rooms within the house. Ranji and Joshua having breakfast. Walking through, we now come to the front of the house. That's the bat room. Up there are the windows to the kitchen, uh, which will open out, meaning that when you're cooking or doing the washing, uh, you'll be able to uh, see out over the rest of the house. And this tiled area is going to be one of the three areas for external uh, eating out. There's a little step there, uh, which covers uh, one of the little uh, legacies, a, a rotting old tree trunk, which has been dealt with. Uh, this step is an area where you'll be able to eat at certain times of the day. Underneath the veranda, where Ranch and Joshua are, is another time of the day. And uh, a third time of the day, you'll be able to eat on the veranda itself looking up to the house, to the steps, to the bread oven, and that little hole in the bread oven contains, if you look very closely, a bomb. It's got no uh, explosive in it, but this is a bomb from apparently the First World War, although its provenance is somewhat doubtful. Right, end of part one. Part two will be inside the property. I'll rejoin you in a second. 
And so we go in to what is known as the batch room. This was the first room that was finished and it's known after what was the dominant wildlife when we first arrived. That is to say, bats. Uh, it had an earthen floor and in this far corner here, there was a huge rock. So in that corner, it was less than five foot tall. The earth was dug out, the rock was dug out and we now have a wooden ceiling. As you can see, a polished concrete floor, the shower working and a separate eco loo here, also functional with extractor fan, I should mention. This room is self-contained, but a new door links it through to the rat room. This is the second of the bedrooms. Again, with a sink, its own eco loo, not yet put there, and shelving. This is what Joshua thinks is his bedroom because it will have Joshua's new bed. Actually, the guys who installed this installed it the wrong way round. In due course, the bed will be on the other side, the upstairs bunk, so the window will not be blocked out. The rat room has its own exit to the front. Currently, it's my desk, my office, also that of the missus, and an entrance through to the main bedroom. This, as you can see, has one uh, window floor to ceiling, which takes you out uh, looking to the convent side of the valley. That there is a machine of the builders. Uh, that is the artwork that will go up here. This is my great great grandfather, Sir Arthur Cochrane, when he was made uh, the Clarence Herald, the people who officiate at coronations. This will be bookshelves. This ladder takes you to upstairs. That's a hatch. I'll show you that in a while. The bathroom, the master bed here, and windows looking out to the garden. Those floor to ceiling windows would take you uh, out looking up to the mountains. But we can get a far better view of the mountains if we go upstairs. Whoops. And so we leave the rat room. This is the old bread oven. I've just spotted a lizard at the bottom of it. And we walk up the stairs, taking us into the second floor. This was the room which was the only room that was vaguely habitable when I first arrived. Uh, I say vaguely habitable. Uh, there were holes in the walls and the ceiling. The ceiling was a flat concrete ceiling, not the pitch ceiling we have now. Uh, and the wildlife was everywhere. There used to be a fire in this corner. And in winter, I would huddle by the fire and feel very, very cold indeed. Uh, in summer, it was stiflingly hot and uh, all sorts of wildlife would come in here. Rats, mice, lizards, uh, flies. I dread to think what else was here. This room is not yet finished. What you see there will be the sink. Sink. Next to it will be a washing machine and over there will be a range cooker, which is on its way from Austria. It seems to have taken eternity. 1943, the Austrian troops got to uh, Greece far quicker than my range cooker arrives in 2018. The view when you're uh, eventually uh, cooking on the range cooker is out to the olives and above them to the mountains, which will be capped with snow in winter, the high to guess us. There'll be a granite top to that work surface. And over here, there will be a wood burning stove. You can see the vent taking the smoke up to the roof. Out here is the veranda. The veranda is not quite finished. Uh, that is to say, it doesn't have any railings. So Joshua has only been allowed on it uh, with his hand held. But eventually it will have railings and you'll be able to sit out here and have your breakfast in the sun. This is the view from the veranda. 
as you can see it goes through the mountains and over to the other side of the valley and that is the road heading back towards Kalamata. There's a little tower house there in the distance. I keep mentioning the deserted convent but at the moment the view is blocked by olive trees. Anyhow this is the view from the veranda and as we walk back in one comes up a flight of stairs and this floor is almost finished we just need to polish the wood this is the living room and it swings around from this side all the way around the corner with no dividing wall taking you over to what is the new wing of the house this is new floor space this is the sofa where in the evening I will sit and collapse and again the view out on this side is to the deserted convent side of the house if you wander around on this side the view is up into the mountains so we can get a better view looking up in the ceiling there will eventually be ceiling mounted lights as well as wall lights this is the view over our own olive groves and up into the mountains the lands of the Greek hovel extend for about 800 meters that way and we have 250 olive trees on our land moving across this is the balcony the balcony runs the length of this uh, uh, of this room so it is above the rat room and it is above the uh, uh, new wing as well and you enter via door to ceiling uh, windows floor to ceiling windows the very view from here is spectacular now you can look up into the mountains these are the mountains directly above us there is apparently a path which goes all the way up to that high mountain where you see the mast in the distance and that's a walk that I plan to do one day. I think it'll be quite arduous. One of those walks that's a lot easier going down than going up. Those are the mountains in the far distance which do get covered in snow from about late November through to April. And if you look down here, the trees here for three or four terraces down are those that belong to the hovel. Right now, if you look very closely, you can see that they are laden with olives. The olive harvest is in early December, so the trees are pregnant, or whatever the phrase is. And this is it. There's still quite a lot of stuff left around by the workmen, but that will have gone within weeks, and the hovel will be finished in time for the harvest. Bring it on.